Once you have established metric invariance or partial metric invariance, you can continue testing for scalar invariance. When you're testing for scalar invariance, what you're testing for is equivalence of the item intercepts. With metric invariance, we have demonstrated that the lines are parallel, but with scalar invariance, we are testing whether they cross the y-axis at the same spot. If you demonstrate scalar invariance, then the differences in the latent construct capture all the mean differences in the variance of the items. To make clear what I mean, consider the following graph. On the x-axis is an item number 1 from a given scale. The y-axis represents the construct. If an item has color invariance, then the intercept of the items should be the same. If they are not, it means that the color equivalence for that item is not met. How to test for color invariance? Recall that scalar invariance means that the intercepts are the same, so what we have to do now is ask from Amos to estimate the same model as before, so we are still keeping the factor loading constraint to be equal, but in addition we will ask for the intercepts to be constrained equal. Let's see how to do this. To test for scalar invariance, we need to constrain the item intercepts to be equivalent across groups. But before we do that, we first need to tell Amos that we want the item intercepts to be estimated. So we'll go to View, Analysis Properties, and on the um, Estimation tab, we're going to click Estimate Means and Intercepts. And to restrain the intercepts to be equivalent for the two groups, we need to either right-click or double-click on the indicator items. And where it says intercept, we're going to write uh, the name for the intercept. We can go with I1, I2, I3, etc. Now that we have constrained the item intercepts to be equivalent for the two groups, we're going to click on Calculate Estimates and request the output and go to Model Fit. So we are looking at the chi-square and its degrees of freedom, the comparative fit index, the Tucker-Lewis index and the root mean square error for approximation. So I'm going to write this, write down these values in the table. Let's do that. Here are the values for the scalar invariance model fit indices. And to see whether scalar invariance is met or not, we're going to compare these values to the model fit indices for the metric invariance model. This is basically what is shown in the comparison column where it says M2. It just means that we're comparing these values to the values of the model 2. As you can see in the delta chi-square column, uh, it, the chi-square is not significant. It's 15.91 with 11 degrees of freedom and that is not significant. So it argues that the model are equivalent. Likewise, the changes in the comparative fit index, Tucker-Lewis index, and the root mean square error of approximation all argue for equivalence because they do not exceed the recommended values.